Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Robert's Rebellion as House Martel. A little bit of a new thing for this, uh, we're purely doing this just to give you more hot seating content. Uh, we'll be recording and uploading immediately upon playing and uploading the turn to Toddlewall Center. So, you know, people could very easily cheat. I don't really give a shit if they do. If they're caught doing it, they'll be removed from the hot seat and blacklisted. But, you know, how the hell do you catch somebody watching a video? Uh, you, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm not taking this hot overly seriously. First order of business is putting my taxation too high. Your Dawn doesn't have any other uh, other shit, does it? No. And I know from experience, I'll change my capital to hell hot. Which will make my uh, income a lot nicer. Which is good. First order of business, so other than changing my capital and what, doing my taxation is destroying a fuckload of completely and utterly meaningless buildings. Like, for instance, stables, gone. Boa, gone. Church, gone. The only buildings that we'll keep, and even those we can destroy down the line, is the uh, armorer, just to make my units slightly better, and the uh, the garrison quarters, which just, uh, just is useful to have, essentially. At any rate, I'm going to go through all of my regions quick and destroy any helpless and useless buildings in order to become filthy rich. Alright, I'm now swimming in money. Having destroyed all the buildings that are completely useless for hot seating. Um, you may be asking why I destroyed the... Essentially, you don't need cavalry for hot seating. Not for all resolve. Anyway, uh, it's primarily heavy infantry that wins out the day, especially when you're fighting units that uh, got bonuses against cavalry. You don't really want them in your armies. Uh, they're good for scouting, but they're also immensely expensive. So by destroying the cavalry, we can have like twice as much infantry, which is just so much better. So I'm going to go through all of my castles and get rid of the Dornish noblemen because they are fucking draining my economy. All right, there we go. I got rid of all the... Uh, all the cavalry, essentially, because the cavalry are fucking expensive. I'd rather have... Actually, it means I'm not even going into debt now, which is great. So, uh, first order of business, after doing all that crap with the buildings and the units and everything, getting my armies ready, I do need to recruit a bunch of stuff. But in order to plan ahead, because we are obviously loyal to the Targaryens, Ilya is married to Rhaegar, despite his recent dalliance with the Stark bitch. So, um, yeah, we are obviously loyal to the Targaryens. So our first order of business is raping the Stormlands. And uh, before we do anything, I want to see how the Stormlands begins with uh, their starting armies. So, I have downloaded Baratheon Save. Haha! <laughs> and though this isn't cheating, I can easily load up a single-player game and see where his frickin' starting armies are. This is called being smart. <laughs> so, I have looked at this before, so I'll just give you the quick overhaul. Uh, the Stormlords start off with only two galleys, and it will take five turns for them to recruit two more. Uh, you, my fleet is vastly superior to that, so we don't have to worry too much about that. He can't defend Greenstone, he can't defend Mistwood, he can't defend Rainhouse, practically. He can't really defend Stormhelm, he can't defend Blackhaven. Blackhaven in itself only has, like, six units, and he'd have to build... Uh, well, uh, best case, he can build, like... Yeah, even when I, he's not going to have enough to defend himself, and he can't get troops from over here across there. It's going to take him ages to get all the way around that. Uh, Felwood is like three turns off of it, so that's not going to happen. And if he abandons St uh, Storm's End to go over to Blackhaven, that's also not going to happen. Uh, Robert Baratheon's over here. Robert Baratheon is interesting. You can, he could. Uh, I did like the safe route is moving south and fleeing to his allies. Or he could uh, go like that. My lord. He needs five uh, units inside the fort. He could go like that and then like rush to High Garden. But Tyrell could like combat him. If he if he's smart, he'll go north and run and uh, get to Stark and Tully and Aaron and everyone and his allies. Anyway, back to our turn, which I remembered that I did not save after I did all that stuff. So bollocks, I'm going to have to go redo all of that. Well done, Sol. Well done. <laughs> not forgetting the fact, um, Baratheon can't even send troops from Felwood. It's cut off by the Tyrell's army. So if if Lord Fell somehow gets past Thornton, we know that the Tyrells have screwed us. <laughs> which, uh, which will be interesting. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, the, let's say, in best case scenario... He can raise 
If it takes us two turns to get there, he gets like nine, maybe ten units. Uh, against the 16 that Yonwood has with him. So, yeah, Blackhaven will be completely mine. All right, that's that done. Uh, yeah, I had to go back to destroy everything and get rid of the cavalry. Uh, I'm going to keep the Dornish Knights and the Knights of Yonwood. Uh, Yonwood, they're not too bad units. It's, it's not the end of the world to have some cavalry. It actually can be fairly decent to have a few of them, especially if they're the... Uh, the area recruitment ones, like the ones that are specially recruited, like, for instance, the Knights of Yornwood are pretty freaking badass. So having them isn't too bad. Usually when you remove the cavalry, it's primarily just because if you get rid of all the cavalry, you make so much more money that you can just get twice as many infantry, and it's just overall a lot better. But uh, for now, and the purposes of what I want to do with Yornwood, which is Zerg Blackhaven, uh, I'm just going to have sort of every single unit on hand. So, yeah, he's just going to zerg up north to Blackhaven. And in theory, Baratheon shouldn't be able to do shit to stop me. That's what I'm hoping. Um, yeah, I want to leave you in there. Yeah, it's not too bad that that's empty for now, really. It's... Yeah, Targaryen's no... Uh, Inferior Tyrell's with us. But who the hell knows? <laughs> I'm going to send him into Yornwood. And then he might go push up north and help that out. Or stick around either way. Uh, we're not going into debt yet, which is good. But we will be going into debt once I do this. And the next turn, we don't lay siege to that in the next turn. What we do is we make it so that my fleet can come over here and blockade his fucking port. Essentially. Because, uh, as you remember from our looking at the save, uh, Baratheon has two galleys. Two galleys cannot take out three galleys in a freaking war galley. So, we have no worry in that, in, that, uh, in that area. I can essentially just sail up north and deal with that. I am losing money, but that will be rectified once I sack that island and I sack Rainhouse and I start caking this crap and I take Blackhaven as well. Uh, I'll also have a lot more upkeep when some of the crap in here is free upkeep. Uh, I'll also have a lot less money because, well... Uh, I'll recruit a militia just to have free... But yeah, I have a lot less money because I'm about to go about around my settlements and build a fuckload of stuff, so... Yeah. Um, always, by the way, in the first turn of like every single hot seat you ever play, start building ships because ships will fucking save your ass. You control the seas, you control the entire freaking hot seat. Simply put, should always build ships. Fucking always. Regardless of the situation. Um, I don't want to spend too much money, is the thing. Uh, see, in theory, Ty Tyrell has said that he's with us. He said he's with us. I don't know if he actually is, but there you go. Uh, I need a freaking diplomat, but I'd rather have ships, so I'm just going to get Targaryen to send me an alliance. I don't actually really need an alliance with him. Uh, if you're wondering, Rhaegar's, like, right here with a full stack, uh, near Lyanna, the bitch. But yeah, uh, we'll build there. Flowers will go here. Here, Yornwood will Zerg Blackhaven, anticipating that he can't get any troops there in time to save the fucking thing. And even if he did, you know, it's basically a lost cause, I think. It should be, anyway. Uh, yeah. What are we looking at here? We're looking at, like, I'm losing about 1k a turn, which isn't too bad. Uh, I could lay siege to that next turn. If I lay siege to that next turn, though, it allows him to sort of land troops. What I need to do is neutralize his fleet. And then I can land troops basically wherever I want. I can take Tarp, I can take Greenstone. But, uh, yeah, that's the idea. Also, we've got Targaryen's fleet. 
Which, if I get Targaryen to sell down as well, that's a fucking shoe in really, isn't it? I don't know what the hell Targaryen's situation is. We'll have to go look at that, actually. Fuck me. I'm just going to go check, see what Targaryen's fleet looks like. This is what Targaryen looks like. They start with a war galley and two galleys. Although they do have to contend with Aaron as well. I'm not sure how badass Aaron's fleet is. If it's it's probably like exactly the same and an exact copy of Targaryen's. Now, if Targaryen's smart, he's building a war galley and that at the same time, and he's building a war galley and all of that shit at the same time as well. I remember he'll have a lot more money from destroying all of his buildings as well, and he has Rhaegar down here. Uh, he'll either go north and join up with the Tyrells or go around and stick with me. Be probably safer sticking with me, to be honest. But it's uh, it's up to him. But yeah, um, we'll, we'll be able to deal with Baratheon's fleet on our own. What I'm going to do? Do that. Because then my fleet... That one has armies in it. But if I go like this, it's like just out of range of where that is. But if I do that... Then they're sort of got more movement points, which is handy. At the same time, if they get attacked, they're still not going to defeat my shit. I hope. <laughs> There's no night fighters for fleets, so we're cool. At any rate, we are building stuff there. Building stuff there. Yeah, I think everything is set, frankly. I don't know if it's worth beginning construction on some other stuff. See, I'm anticipating as far as money goes, Yorn will do take Blackwood, sack that. Uh, after we've taken Blackwood, I'll probably disband this and this, which gives me almost an entire grand just for two freaking cavalry units. Uh, and then Auburn Martell and this full stack here, essentially, will take that island. They'll take Tarf, they'll take Rainhouse, they'll take Mistwood, they'll take Stone uh, Stonehelm. They'll essentially, even if I'm like going into debt now, and even if I start recruiting now, it, money won't be a problem because I'm going to start sacking the living shit out of multiple castles, so it shouldn't be a problem. That's the theory. Like I said, I'm not putting too much thought into the... This is me not putting too much thought into a hot seat, by the way. Um, yeah, we'll build two there. So what I'll do. Uh, I still got one unit of upkeep there, so we do. If we just build one Dornish Spearman, actually, we may as well build the Swordsman. Yeah, if we just build one Dornish Swordsman in each thing, that gives me free upkeep. I don't have to pay upkeep for these units I'm building. Uh, these ones I'll keep up just because I want. That's essentially a full stack almost there, which will go to Sunspear. Take ship and the next fleet that goes out, kind of thing. So, uh, three units there, three units there, three units there, fleet there. Yornwood gets on the front line as well, so you're building the bulk of the forces. Skyreach again, front lines. Uh, you guys will just build that. Oh, I don't know. I need the money. thing is, I don't... I, I can I can destroy extra stuff, but I'd, I'd rather not destroy extra stuff. Is the thing. So if we just build three units there, three units there, three units there on the front line, we build troops on the front line up here as well, and on the front line up there. But we don't recruit anything other than that militia unit inside Stone Dance or Hell Hot, and then that puts me still at six k, then I'll be at five k, and then I'll, you know, sack that, which will get me like four k from sacking it, and then I'll sack. Blackhaven, which will get me another 4k. And then it'll get me the taxation from both of them, so that will deal me out of the thing itself, uh, out of debt itself. So yeah, I think we're set. Uh, you know, I mean, some, some, Baratheon could watch all of this and somewhat see my moves coming, but he can't really do much about them. Uh, Blackhaven he might be able to if he zergs forces all the way over here. Or Tyrell could just sort of kill us all, but I don't know. Eh. He said he's not, and he said he's going to be watching the videos, so, you know. Hi, Bolton. <laughs> um, yeah, at any rate, I think that's it. Fuck it. We'll, uh, we'll end the turn here.
uh, uploaded the total center and be done with it. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but I'll keep pushing up north. Yeah, fuck it. Alright, thank you for watching. We'll go next turn. Whenever the hell the next turn is.